Hey friends, Dustin here. You're watching the Life of Lynn channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Today's a little bit different video. Today I'm doing a product review video only because I think it's something you guys would be interested in. And, well, I was interested in it, so maybe you are. Let's get to it. Oh, look at this little guy. Check this out. This is the EcoFlow Delta 2. This is the new model that they just came out with. I think it actually releases the day that I'm releasing this video. So those links will be active. But check this thing out. This is a fully powered solar generator and this is way more than just a battery. I'm pretty excited about this. The last review video I did was on my Kubota tractor and I was really happy with it so I thought I should share that information with you. We're going to go outside and do some real world testing with this thing today, try out all the ports, try out its solar charging capability, test how good this battery bank is. Uh, but first some stats on it, portable solar generator, way more than just a battery bank because everything's built in, super lightweight, super portable, handles at both ends, sturdy, I think it weighs maybe 25 pounds ish, somewhere around there. Nice bright display, that does shut off so uh, you know if you're using it in your tent at night you don't have to look at it all the time. It'll time itself out and shut on down. Got a ton of ports on this thing. You got all your USB A's, your USB C's. These are 100 watt USB C's too. Um, so you can tr fast charge certain appliances off of this one, which is pretty awesome. That's just the front. Side profiles, both sides vented with fans that come on automatically. This thing's whisper quiet until you put a pretty big load on it. Um, then the fans kick on to cool itself, but uh, they're not that loud. See? Also on this side, you can connect more of the EcoFlow batteries to this thing. There's a special connector and a special battery that stacks right on top of this and looks exactly the same. It's going to double your storage capacity. I like how that port's right there. I think this is uh, very specific to only EcoFlow products, so you can't quite just jumper it and put any lithium battery on the side. But either way, pretty good. The back is where the business is. Uh, yeah, you've got six 110 volt ports on there. Uh, two of these are the high output ports. This thing is capable of 1800 watts continuously or 2200 watts on X-Boost. And I think it actually has a 2700 watt uh, surge capacity. So if you're starting a AC compressor or an air compressor or an electric motor or something that has a lot of initial draw. We've got some other ports on here too. Uh, some 12 volt DC ports, you know, the old cigarette lighter style down there. Up here, those are your charge ports. This thing's equipped with fast charge, which is a nice feature that I've never had in uh, one of these solar generators. I've had a couple of these for years. I've Some of the old Yeti 400s has been around for what, 10 years now? Yeah, those don't fast charge. That's just a couple solar panels and you set it outside all day. If you're in a hurry or if you just want to store this thing up with a lot of energy and park it in the closet for a few months, you can. You just plug it in here to your AC outlet and this thing pulls 1200 watts in on the charger. When it does that, the fans kick on high and it shows you exactly how much power is going in and how long it's going to take to fully charge this battery bank. Right here, that's where your solar goes in. We'll test that out too. This so little guy is using the latest in battery technology. That's why it's so lightweight. Uh, it's an LFP battery. And the capacity of this little unit is just over 1,000 watt hours, which is pretty decent for its size and weight. You can power a lot of things with that. There's a whole list on their website if you're interested on how many times you can charge up your phone on one of these. I think it's over a hundred, which is pretty impressive. And you can pair it with up to 500 watts of solar panels. The nice thing is when you have solar hooked up and you got a good sunny day and say you're using 200 watts on one of your refrigerators or something, you still have 200 watts keeping this battery bank charged up. So at nighttime, when you don't have sun coming in, you can draw off the battery bank. Not to mention it's expandable. So if you do want to use more appliances and that sort of thing. I know recently there's been a lot of things that have happened in the last couple of years where having some power sitting around in your closet ready to go would be pretty useful. When the Texas grid went down that extreme cold weather snap that they had, if everybody had one of these things, it would have been a lot better off. You could at least keep your refrigerator going. Now this wouldn't be much for an electric heater, it's just not enough capacity. Electric heaters use a lot of juice and 
Well, this thing would probably run one, but probably only for an hour or two, which isn't going to get you very much. But if you had a wood stove, and this guy powering your refrigerator so all your food wasn't going bad, you'd be in pretty good shape. Now for the fun part. Let's hook stuff up to it and see if it catches on fire. Yeah, yeah, it just, ah. Yeah, that's up there. Ha. What we have here is a set power 45 quart DC powered refrigerator. And actually it can be a freezer too. I believe it goes down all the way to negative two on the thermostat. We'll be doing a review on this guy later, but for right now, let's just plug this bad boy in and um, see how much juice she uses. Fire it up. Ooh, look, lights. I heard a compressor come on. Awesome. Now she's already cooled off to about 32 degrees because I've been running this fridge for a couple days. We're bouncing between, I don't know, about 25 watts and 65 watts. If this compressor was to run non-stop, our EcoFlow is telling us that it can get about 17, 16-ish hours off of this bank to power this. <clears throat> the great thing is, is this thing's going to reach temperature. All your food's going to get down to that temperature and then it's going to shut off. And then it'll stay off for 20 or 30 minutes, then kick on for a couple minutes and then shut off. So really, this thing's going to go and power that for days. What else can we power? Yeah. There you go. My computer monitor. I don't even remember how to turn this on. Hope for that. No. Oh, check video cable. Clearly it still works, even though it's been on the shelf for years. Well, we got that powered up. No problem. What are we drawing now? Hmm. 58 to 72 watts. That's not very much. This thing can take up to 1800. Let's find the other things. This is a five horsepower shop vac and it's old and it kind of smells like the brushers are worn out. This will put a good test on it. Alright, fire in the hole! Woo! That it went up a lot. Pulling about 1200 watts now. Fired it up like that. Is our monitor still working? Oh, and in the sleep mode. Everything else is still on too. If I ran this vacuum, five horsepower vacuum, it's saying this battery bank would be shot in about 42 minutes. What else could we plug into it? found a massive shop fan. Let's uh, aim it that way, maybe you can hear me. I don't know what this thing draws, but it's got a real big motor on it. Let's uh, turn it on high and see what happens. Oh, fired right up. Actually not too bad. Initially is drawing a little over 400 watts. Now if the fan's up to speed, drawing about 280 with the fridge running. So we're gonna get a little over two hours out of both the fridge and the fan running on high on just the battery bank that's not being charged by solar. Pretty good. Well all you contractor guys out there will be happy to know that it could run a five horsepower shop vac and a big construction fan. It's pretty handy to keep in your truck for going to a job site and you need a little juice and don't want to fire up a big noisy generator. This little guy's going to get you by for a couple hours. But let's do some real world testing like with campers because that's what I do. Let's pull out the adventure rig here. We're going to grab this and uh, the 220 watt solar panel that you can buy with this that's foldable. Lightweight little guy. We'll show you that here in a minute too. And uh, let's just plug it in and fire that thing all the way up. And maybe even turn on the air conditioner. See if this little lightweight box can power an entire camper. 
So there you go, guys. There is the 220 watt EcoFlow solar panel. Oh, you can lean this thing up against something or fold it out or whatever you want to do. Oh, about 110 watts coming in off the sun right now. Even with it pointing kind of the wrong direction and my shadow being in the way. It says it'll take it about an hour to top the bank back off with that one panel. That's pretty sweet. Let's uh, plug in an RV, shall we? All right, here we got our 30 amp cord and a reducer down to a 15 amp. You know, safety. I don't advise you actually doing this. But let's see if you can. Fire in the hole. I just heard the air conditioner kick on. We've got about 390 watts going out and about 120 coming in from the sun. That's not too bad. If I aim that a little bit better, you know, towards the big ball of fire in the sky, you could probably get a little closer to that 200 watts. But uh, look at that. That's right, air conditioner's working. Our adventure rig is now outside, off grid, and air conditioned. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. All right, with the fridge running on propane mode and all of the LED lights on inside, we're only pulling 23 watts out of this guy and putting over 120 back in. And that's with the solar panel not even really set up how I should be. So it's saying this whole battery bank's going to be recharged in an hour. We're putting more back into it than we're pulling out. So if we could live without air conditioning, which we can because humans have done it for centuries, then we never need to plug back in again. This thing's just going to work. Impressive. In conclusion, guys, pretty happy with the product I guess pros would be it's lightweight uh, it's a little bit less expensive than other models and it does a good job of powering things under 1800 watts so cons would be batteries a little bit small but this is their lightweight model if you want a bigger battery go with the Delta Pro uh, another thing is is it has a smartphone app that allows you to change settings and monitor it and stuff you have to download that app in order to change certain settings. I don't download apps. Hate them. Don't like everything on my phone. My phone's for calling, texting, and making YouTube videos. So that's a little bit annoying because I did notice on the DC port on this thing, if you don't change the setting to always on, if you're using something like that refrigerator, it'll time out after an hour. So if the fridge has been shut off because it's cold and it's not pulling a load, after an hour it shuts that whole thing down. And that's its power save mode and then your fridge will stop cooling because when your fridge goes to turn back on because it's finally warmed up enough there's no juice there so supposedly you can change that setting inside the app like i said i don't download apps i wish there was a way you could go into a menu and change the settings right on the unit um i guess those are my only two major concerns with it all in all pretty good product plus they're offering you guys a discount on them they just released you get 5% off, which is actually quite a bit because uh, these things are expensive to make. That's a lot of stuff packed into a nice little lightweight unit. You could throw that thing in your car, even a, a large toolbox, um, go camping, job site, emergency backup power for your house. I recommend checking it out. So I do have a link down in the description and that's gonna have your 5% off code. Please get that, use it, copy it. They're gonna say, oh, hey, you guys did a good job and maybe send me like something cool. I don't know, a sticker or something, but not on stickers. Thank you guys for watching this review video. It's been a while since I did one. If you guys haven't seen my review on the Kubota L2501 tractor, go check it out. I'm gonna be doing a couple more. That refrigerator is one of them. So if you guys are interested in that stuff, let me know down in the comments. If you guys hate me doing these videos, also let me know down in the comments. I'm just trying to get more content out there for you guys. And I felt like this was a pretty useful one. Thank you guys so much for watching. God bless you. 
and we will see you in the next one.